New Life, great to be with you today. It's an honor to have the opportunity to open God's word with you. Yesterday in Alamo, in the week before in Dublin, uh, Pastor Doug talked about being rich towards God. And he largely leaned into the theme of, of tithing, putting God first with our tithes and our offering, giving God our first uh, and our best, not our last and our, our leftovers. And the way that we, we do this is through what is called the tithe. Today, I wanna talk a little bit more about the tithe uh, looking at a key passage in scripture, Malachi chapter three, starting in verse six, and it talks with us, the Lord talks with us about the way the tithe unleashes certain blessings in our lives. Because here's the thing, while, while all God's blessings are available to us in Jesus, they're not always activated. We have to activate them. Sometimes there is a prerequisite to the promise and if we don't fulfill the prerequisite, we can't receive the blessing that, that God has in store for us as his kids. And, and so today I want to read from Malachi chapter three, verses six, and just talk about it for a couple minutes with you. This is what God's word says. I, the Lord, do not change. Note that there. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and not and not and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how how are we robbing you? And the Lord says this: in tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are, are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And then note this line, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and vines and your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. You know, you may have heard this before. Uh, people say, don't test God. And while that is uh, a good rule to, uh, to follow in your life, the Bible, God's word, actually gives you one exception to this rule, and it is in relationship to tithing. Now, now in case you're wondering, what is tithing? Well, tithing, it, it means 10th or 10%, most literally. And in this passage of scripture, God's word says that you can actually test him in this. He's saying, if you give me your first and your best, the first 10%, not your last and your leftovers, test me in this, in sowing into my house with, with the first and the best that belongs actually to him because he uses the word robbing, which means it actually doesn't belong to us. If we test him in this, he says, look at what I'll do. He says, see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. In this passage, we see that there is a prerequisite to the blessing, a prerequisite to the promise, and it is putting God first in our giving, in our tithes, in our offerings by returning unto him what he has entrusted to us. Ultimately, at, at the very core, this is a heart thing, a heart thing that, that reveals a few different aspects of, of our life. It, it, it actually, when we, we put God first in our giving, it is actually a statement of trust, saying, God, I trust you with my finances. I trust you with my money. I trust you because ultimately this all belongs to you anyways. And when we trust him in, with our first and our best, then God begins to release the blessings and the favor that he has for us. Uh, in this uh, passage of scripture, it is a powerful declaration that God is making that when we put him first, when we trust him with our tithes and our offering, he releases blessing. But here's, here's what else I want to underscore, that, that although God will give us external blessings when we entrust the tithe to him, 
There are also things that occur on the inside. In fact, every single time you tithe, this is what's, what's, what's happening. You are declaring that God is first in your life, that God is first. And here's the reality. If Jesus isn't first in your life, it's actually hard to argue that he's Lord of your life. Why? Because a Lord is over everything, in control of everything in a person's life. And, uh, and so it says, when we, when we put forth the tithe, we're saying, Jesus, you are first in my life. It's why Jesus in the gospels, he, he says, you can't serve God and money. He's saying it's impossible to follow money and Jesus as your Lord. You have to choose which one. Who is your Lord? Is it, is it money or, or is it Jesus? And in fact, leaning into this, a second thing that's, that's very similar, that every time you tithe, you are actually demonstrating that you aren't controlled by money, but rather that you control the money that has been entrusted to you. Ultimately, a person might not sow into generosity or giving many times because they are controlled by their money. They don't own their stuff. Their stuff owns them. And yet when we make the decision to tithe, to return to the Lord, what ultimately belongs to him, we're saying, God, you actually are in control and I'm just giving it back to you. I'm not going to let this be my Lord. I'm not going to let it control me in my life. Third, in a culture of consumption, uh, tithing turns us into people who are marked by giving and generosity. It turns us into generous people. Every time you give, you are allowing the Lord to shape you into a generous giving individual. And that is countercultural. In a world of consumption that is focused on me, myself, and I, we are saying, God, use these resources to bless the world around us. It isn't ultimately about me. It's about you. It's about people knowing you. And so I want to encourage you today, read this chapter for yourself, Malachi chapter three, verses six, all the way down to 12. I believe the Lord has a word in store for many people from this passage of scripture. And as you trust the Lord, even as he says, test me in this, as you test him in this, I believe that, that the Lord is going to release blessing over your life. And so let me encourage you, put him first, put your trust in him. He wants. In fact, I want you to think about this, not as a, like a thing where, where uh, I want you to think about it as a get to. God wants to bless you in your life. He wants to release favor. He wants to release blessing. He wants to multiply you in significant ways. He wants you to live under the umbrella of his blessing, but you have to trust him. And so let me pray a prayer of blessing over you today. And uh, I believe the Lord is going to minister to you. Father, we thank you for your word because your word leads us. Your word guides us. Your word gives us direction. And Lord, I just thank you that this passage reveals that you actually want to bless us, that you want to pour out blessing over our life. And, and so God, I pray for each and every person today that might be struggling in the area of faith and trust. I pray that today, faith would arise, childlike faith, trust in their heavenly father would arise, knowing that you want to bless them as they put you first, as they trust you. Lord, I, I thank you that you are calling your church, the church across the world to be generous because that is in your nature. That is who you are. You are the generous God for God so loved the world that he gave. Every single time we give God, we're becoming more like you. And so Lord, I pray that over your church today, may we become generous people as Jesus is generous to us. In Jesus' name, amen.